Hi, and welcome to the Trading Bell Show. Now, we want to get to a little bit of matters manufacturing, especially in terms of vehicles and things that enable us to do business. And we have camped right here at Isuzu East Africa, as you can see. And we have set up right here, just outside the MD's office, and she's right inside there. So I want to invite her, then we get into our conversation. Rita, we're ready for you. <laughs> Welcome to our set. <laughs> Welcome, Maina, to Isuzu East Africa. Nice oh, to see you. Absolutely, same to you. Richard Kavashi, welcome to the show. Thank you, Maina. It's good to have you here. It's been some time we were, we were saying we need to hear your voice. <laughs> and finally, we're here. Yeah. Let me start the conversation by uh, not making any assumption. Of mm -hmm. course, we have seen your brands outside, outside uh, and uh, really enabling people to move. Mm -hmm. But in a nutshell, how would you introduce Isuzu to the people? Uh, I would say Isuzu East Africa was established way back in 1975. Uh, wow as a partnership between the government of Kenya and yeah. then General Motors Corporation. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was just about after independence when the government was looking for investors to invest in the country. Yeah. And that is how then General Motors was, was established. Mm -hmm. uh, in um, uh, 2017, mm -hmm. uh, we changed hands mm -hmm. where uh, Isuzu Motors Limited of Japan mm -hmm. bought 57 stakes of mm -hmm. um, 57% of the shares of General Motors, yeah. uh, and we transitioned our company into Isuzu East Africa. Sure. So we're in the business of actually assembly of motor vehicles mm -hmm. right here in this factory. Mm -hmm. We are in the business of distribution, and our distribution of the Isuzu products that we sell uh, is done through our dealer network. Yeah. We only have one store here, mm -hmm. and we have two dealers in our export, um, uh, export market. Okay. So we have about 500, 500 employees that are working here. Wow. Uh, in a nutshell, that is it. Okay. Isuzu is the brand that we sell, and we are mainly in the business of commercial vehicles. Okay. One ton pickup, yeah. all the way to 30 ton trucks. Yeah. And I've also seen a lot of school buses as well, even as they came. Oh, yeah. We're a market yellow. leader <laughs> in that space, so <laughs> we provide all the, the, school, the school buses as well uh, yeah. for PSV application, mm -hmm. institutions, and schools. Excellent. Mm. Let's talk about what you've seen in terms of reception uh, mm -hmm. to your customers and growth over the years. Mm -hmm. What would be your sentiments on that so far? Uh, we see a lot of opportunity. We have been in this market, as I've said, since 1975. You're right. And we have seen several cyclic uh, situations of opportunities and not so much. Mm -hmm. But uh, we believe we are here in the long run. Mm -hmm. And in the last four years, Isuzu East Africa has spent three billion uh, in expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, we started with the expansion of our pickup line, mm -hmm. uh, where we brought back the pickup trucks used to be produced in our plant in South Africa. We brought the pickup back here yeah. uh, because we, we see opportunity mm -hmm. and we wanted to reduce them. Um, a cost and there was also incentive from the government that when yeah. you produce locally yeah. then you don't have to pay taxes such as import duty and we thought that was a big opportunity sure. uh, for us and as for our customers as well who are mm -hmm. looking to save every penny in their in their business yeah uh, we launched the dynamic test unit which yeah. is uh, uh, safety yeah. enhancement mm -hmm. a feature to mm -hmm. support our production and safety of the vehicles that we produced mm -hmm. Uh, in June this year, we brought in His Excellency the President yeah. to launch our paint plant. We yeah. call it Electro Deposition Paint Facility. Yeah. And uh, what this has done is that it has increased our production capacity mm -hmm. uh, from 11,000 vehicles mm -hmm. per annum yeah. to 18,000 units per annum. So okay. an additional wow. uh, 7,000 Seven. units yeah. that we can produce in this plant. Yeah. All this is in the backdrop of the opportunities yeah. uh, that we see both in Kenya mm -hmm. uh, as well as regional yeah. to expand our footprint mm -hmm. into our export market because th this is where we are anchoring. And in the backdrop of that is the whole conversation around Africa free trade area. Mm -hmm. How can we position uh, Kenya as a strategic hub yeah. uh, to be able to supply the regional markets? 
Speaking about what you launched, the electoral disposition paint plant, mm -hmm. um, I think just for the sake of uh, our viewers to understand it, mm -hmm. I understand this is the first in the region, mm -hmm. right? And so we are having vehicles painted as fast. I'm, I'm, I want to use my mere language, yes. painted as fast, the ones that we see somersault in, right? <laughs> yes. So so it's, it's very interesting uh, because traditionally yes. we would uh, do spray painting. Mm -hmm. And of course, that, that takes time. Mm -hmm. And also, you cannot assure quality. And there's some components of a vehicle that are hidden. Mm. So the, the, the paint gun might not be able to penetrate that right. deep. So the electrodeposition paint plant is, is now enhancing that. And we can be able to back and assure mm -hmm. high level of quality, especially for customers who are using like pickups and all that. They're very sensitive about how the quality of that paint is coming out. How are we going to assure mm -hmm. a quality as far as erosion is concerned and all that? Right. So yes, increases pro uh, productivity, mm -hmm. uh, quality of, uh, of the product that we produce, yeah. and of course the whole issue around a capacity enhancement because paint, paint shop, paint yeah. process yeah. Is, is, is very labor intensive mm -hmm. uh, and therefore that reduces the, the cost of labor because then you can be able to use the plant more efficiently. You're right. Let's talk about something you mentioned um, and I'm, I want to point out at Isuzu's contribution to the economy. Uh -huh. uh, from what you've mentioned, for example, over 500 persons working here definitely that um, has a direct impact to the economy. Uh -huh. But I'm sure from where you sit, uh, you can be able to see if this happened, we would be able even to double our numbers. We would mm. be able to do this kind of things. And that has an effect to the economy. Mm. Um, I would want to see what are you thinking about so that at least you can grow in that particular sector mm. where it touches more lives and even the economy. Mm. And as well as touch on the headwinds, because mm. one of the things that we see is debates outside there where people say, ah, let me bring my vehicle from somewhere else mm. and the likes. And, you know, those could be challenges that probably are hitting you. Mm -hmm. I know that's quite a mouthful, but mm -hmm. I wanted to just speak into that. Yeah, so like the investments that we, we have made yeah. uh, is an indication that there is possibility to actually double yeah. uh, the, the production capacity of Kenya. Absolutely. So when you look at Kenya as a country, mm -hmm we have installed capacity mm -hmm. to produce about 40,000 vehicles per annum. Wow. Currently, we are producing less than 10,000 vehicles per annum, mm. taking 20, mm -hmm. uh, 2023 as a year yeah. uh, of review, less than 10,000 uh, yeah. 10, trucks yeah. and buses that we're producing locally. Yeah. So you can see we have 30,000 capacity that is installed. Yeah. So why are we continuing to invest? We are continuing to invest because there are a host of policy mm -hmm. uh, interventions that we think mm -hmm. will open up the opportunity mm -hmm. fast locally. Okay. Uh, and this is the, the country has uh, uh, implemented the automotive policy. Mm -hmm. uh, and the automotive policy is supposed to form what we call an automotive council. Yeah. Already it has passed through parliament. Mm -hmm. Now the government is in the process of uh, creating the regulations. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's going to be the first time mm -hmm. that actually Kenya mm -hmm. has come up with an auto policy. Yeah. We have been investing in good faith. Yes. But for the first <laughs> time we have a policy. So we think with that policy, mm -hmm. there are beautiful interventions there. Yeah. Where, for instance, um, when you import CKD, mm -hmm. you're not charged uh, import duty. Yeah. And there's also opportunity to reduce mm -hmm. uh, the importation of second-hand vehicles because countries that have developed like Egypt, South Africa, yeah. have developed because of uh, policy interventions mm -hmm. that stimulate growth and demand for locally mm -hmm. produced vehicles. Yeah. South Africa today is producing about half a million vehicles per annum wow. and they don't allow importation of second-hand vehicles. So mm -hmm. Kenya is going to do that mm -hmm. in a graduated manner. For yeah. instance, as I've indicated, we mm -hmm. already have capacity to produce 40,000 uh, commercial vehicles in Kenya. Yeah. We are only producing about 10,000 vehicles. Yeah. Uh, so w this is where the window of opportunity is today. So mm -hmm. the government through a standard called KS 1515 mm -hmm. yeah. has already stopped um, a restricted importation mm -hmm. of second-hand vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, commercial trucks from three ton mm -hmm. all the way to 30 ton. Okay. Uh, it's right now in the process of implementation. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means that we will move mm -hmm. from producing roughly yeah. in a good year 12,000 
trucks per yeah. annum yeah. to about 24,000 trucks per annum. So wow. we will double our local production. And that's why we have already invested mm. in anticipation to be able to first double production. And when we double production in Kenya, you can imagine the multiplier effect of that. Absolutely. About 10,000 new jobs will be created straight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, additional opportunities in allied services production, yeah. uh, employment will be created. Mm -hmm. um, those industries will grow. Mm -hmm. Today, um, seed supplies, mm -hmm. spring supplies, yeah. The growth is limited, mm -hmm. but when we unlock that opportunity, mm -hmm. those companies will also double yeah. uh, their production and the number of people that they will hire mm -hmm. uh, is going to be also doubled. So You're there's right. this really a beautiful window of, of opportunity here, anchoring on the policy yes. and implementation of the standard and then yeah. looking mm -hmm. strategically now mm -hmm. as Kenya as a serious hub. Yeah. For the for the East African region mm -hmm. and eventually for Africa free trade. Wow. It's coming. Absolutely, absolutely. Speaking about the AFCTA, one question would be, you know, you have already even already expanded in the region mm -hmm. and uh, your brand has quite grown. In fact I would like you to mention on that. Mm -hmm. Where do you position your brand now, looking at it? Uh, especially across the region, mm -hmm. and are you seeing the opportunity with uh, the opening up of these markets? There's a, there's a lot of opportunity in mm. Kenya itself. Our our leadership yeah. is at 52% uh, of the market, okay. so very very strong uh, mm -hmm. in Kenya mm -hmm. uh, because of the great great partnerships that are here. Yeah, our banking sector that we depend on to finance most of our customers mm -hmm. who are retail. Mm -hmm. Uh, has really grown okay. and uh, the bank uh, the banking community working with us we can create yeah we can co-create very interesting mm -hmm. financing packages to to take care of different customer segments yeah it is not the same in in the regional markets mm -hmm. so for instance isuzu is present in um, uganda tanzania rwanda and burundi yeah and uh, one one key opportunity we see is in, in the financing. Mm. How can we leverage the banks that are going regional? Yeah. Like for instance, we want to get into into DRC Congo, mm -hmm. and we have uh, Equity Bank already making some very good progress right. uh, in that country. How can we leverage them, their mm -hmm. presence in those markets, mm -hmm. to continue to create uh, products yeah. for for the customers in those export markets? So quite a quite a huge opportunity right there. Great and fair enough. Mm -hmm. You know, someone could be watching and saying, okay, I was almost considering a certain brand and I can see Rita here saying, Isuzu is the way to go. Mm. What's your competitive advantage? What is this that you can tell this customer? <laughs> <laughs> Buy an Isuzu truck. <laughs> uh, so over yeah. the years, um, we have spent a lot of our production yeah. and product planning effort on yeah. understanding our customers. Mm -hmm. Uh, and creating, co-creating products that meet their their needs. Our customers buy product because they want to derive value of those mm -hmm. products. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we pay a lot of attention in mm -hmm. understanding what is it that our customers are looking for mm -hmm. and creating pro products that really meet uh, the expectations. So, yeah. At the core of our DNA is our diesel engine capability. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is durable. Yeah. It is resilient. Mm -hmm gives you peace of mind yeah. and gives you value for money. Mm. With those four core yeah. attributes, yeah. we have sustained that DNA mm -hmm. over the years from product generation to the next. Yeah. Those core mm -hmm. uh, diesel engine performance and capability have remained at the core. That's giving our customers confidence. Yeah. Supported by that is the whole issue of after sales mm -hmm. uh, to be able to support the customers uh, to increase uptime so that they don't have to waste a lot of time coming in for service. Mm -hmm. We've increased our service touch point from about 13 to about 50, wow. where you can access spare parts or mm -hmm. service mm -hmm. uh, for our product. Yeah. And with that, we are just, we're just growing. Wow, yeah. lovely. And by the way, as we close that part, mm. do you have warranties for someone who has decided, hey, this is my brand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our products, uh, majority of our products come with um, a warrant of three years oh. or, or 100,000 kilometers, whichever whichever is fast. Okay. So that's a, that's a good warrant. And then we have what we call warranty consideration. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we might be in a situation where 
the warranty has expired mm -hmm. and uh, we have some consideration for some of our fleet customers okay. and we give them additional support. But what we are saying uh, is, is more important for us is actually pre preventive maintenance. Mm. Uh, we have a tool that we have introduced um, uh, in, in the market that enables us to be able to tell mm -hmm. Uh, our customers when their vehicles are due for service, yeah. what they need to check. We train the drivers, we train the mechanics so that they can be able to support this product so it doesn't really have uh, to go through so much maintenance and therefore reducing the pain on the on the customers as far as maintenance costs are concerned. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Ladies and gentlemen, once we come back, we will be talking about some of the strategies that have been put in place in terms of leasing models, partnerships that are there to help you probably get one for yourselves or even your corporate. We'll be right back. You're watching The Trading Bell Show. Welcome back. We are speaking with uh, Rita Kavashe, the MD Isuzu East Africa. Lots of conversations. If you missed the first part, please make sure you tune in. And when we were ending the conversation, I told the viewers we'll be talking about how easy it is, maybe through your partnerships, for them to come and probably walk out with a pickup or a truck or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so are there existing models that you've had in partnerships or strategic ways to enable customers have an easy way to acquire one? Yeah, we, we have several. Yeah. Um, government is, is, is one of those. Oh. So we have uh, created a leasing partnership between the National Treasury, yeah. uh, the Leasing Association of Kenya, the mm -hmm. banks, insurance, yeah. uh, body fabricators. It's, it's really a holistic, interesting model that uh, we have co-created with these partners yeah. to enable us to provide mm -hmm. uh, transport solution to our police forces, for instance. Yeah. And we are in the like phase seven, uh, of, of that uh, of that um, uh, program, okay. and it it has a host of benefits mm -hmm. when you look at uh, insurance companies that are providing the insurance support. And most interesting uh, addition is the whole issue around telematics, yeah. uh, which um, uh, is a tool uh, that uh, can track and trace mm -hmm. uh, in terms of where are these vehicles being used. Oh. Are they due for service? You can do offense, you can mm -hmm. be able to track mm -hmm. trucks that are going to the export market. How is the fuel being used? It's really a very empowering tool mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for both ourselves and also the customer in terms of tracking the, the vehicle. For us, mm -hmm. the telematics uh, process helps us to understand mm. um, how we can well support the customer when it comes to after sales because of the data yeah. uh, that we are able to mine out yeah. of this product mm -hmm. to be able to support our customers. From a retail point of view, mm -hmm. Uh, we have several partnerships with, with banks yeah. um, looking at different customer segments okay. and how they want to access support mm -hmm. their customers like for pickups mm -hmm. who would want 100% financing yeah. to be able to procure for instance a pickup mm -hmm. while commercial vehicle um, customers who are in maybe sand and mm -hmm. uh, construction material transportation would be looking for a slightly a longer repayment period yeah. that can be able to take care of seasonality of, of their business and all that. So we sit down with our customers, yeah. we co-create different products. A, yeah. a good one, allow me to share, Go is the school bus program. Yeah. Traditionally, you would finish school, yeah. if you are of my yeah. generation, <laughs> you would uh, contribute to the school bus. Yeah. For four, six years you are in school. Absolutely. And you will leave before the school bus arrives. I experienced that. Yeah. They brought the bus after I left. They brought the bus <laughs> after you left. So what we, we did with the with the NCBA bank, uh, then NIC bank, mm -hmm. was to really understand the cash generation mm -hmm. cycle for a school. Mm -hmm. Traditionally a school is a safe customer. You're right. Because they're there for the long time, they mean good. Mm -hmm. And we were able to then create a financing model where the school only pays mm. at the beginning of the school term. Ah. And today we have been able to capture 90% yeah. of that market where you don't have to wait until you leave the school wow. for the basket of money to get full to be able to buy a bus. Yeah. So those are some of the really great innovation Absolutely. when you talk about 
partners working together to create solutions yeah. that uh, are beneficial mm -hmm. to, to their businesses as well as to society. You're right. As we come to the tail end of the conversation, we are, and the globe is talking a lot about sustainability, the green economy, and corporates really embracing mm -hmm. that they need to constantly think this in their production line. Yeah. You are one of the people as well in the field. Are there any strides in that direction? Actually, last year, Isuzu East Africa was awarded by uh, Kenya Association of Manufacturers mm. as the best energy-saving company in Kenya. Wow, congratulations. So, thank mm -hmm. you very much. So, mm -hmm. we're already in that space. Yeah. When you walk through our factory, mm -hmm. the design of our factory is, mm -hmm. is allowing for free flow of, of light. So, the way we have structured the roof mm -hmm. is so that sunlight can penetrate during the day. We don't really have to yeah. switch on our lights. Yeah. We are in the process of uh, solarizing our entire facility so we can be mm -hmm. solar powered. Yeah. When it comes to, to, to products, you know, in an effort towards um, a carbon neutral, yeah. is uh, we are already engaging as Isuzu East Africa, working with our parent company, Isuzu Motors Limited, mm -hmm. uh, in looking for alternative uh, fuel propulsion for, yeah. for some of our vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at um, um, electrification, wow. we are looking at bio biofuel, mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at um, CNG, mm -hmm. you know, we're looking at a host of, uh, of, of those new modern ways of powering uh, our vehicles and in two years time we should be testing yeah. our, our, our EV mm -hmm. uh, vehicles. So the, the conversation is, is still going on globally. Okay. Uh, we, there are many debates mm -hmm. around uh, the whole issue of electrification yeah. and which one. Mm -hmm. uh, should 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 companies go with? Absolutely. So still under study, yeah. and also wh what is that infrastructure? Mm. Uh, will we we will we be able to produce the requisite power yeah. to be able to power our homes and our industries and our vehicles? So Absolutely. a lot of work still needs to be done. Yeah. But our company is on the forefront yeah. of ensuring that we are continuing to look at sustainable ways of. Uh, of running our operations. Great. I saw you gave uh, the police in this country and some corporates, some vehicles, and I, one of the key words that I underlined was leasing models. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to elaborate on that a little bit. Is this a new model that you've seen? Is it working? Uh, or how can people tap into that as well? Traditionally, leasing was uh, mainly done in Kenya by the large corporates. Yeah. Uh, that wanted to keep some of these costs off their balance sheet. So mm -hmm. they went to, 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 to adopt a leasing model. Yeah. Uh, but over the years, we have seen this leasing model being adopted mm -hmm. by even retail customers, yeah. by even the PSV. Yeah. Uh, right now, we are running a, a program with the cooperative bank uh, and, and, uh, and uh, a local bus company mm -hmm. anchored on a leasing model. So uh, very, very interesting yeah. concept because then with, with, with a leasing a program, mm -hmm. you can predict how much you're going to pay at the, at the, at the end of m the month. Yeah. And we also sign subleases that are of, like, of maintenance nature. So the, the product is also maintained by, mm -hmm. uh, by us or by the leasing company, yeah. thus giving the, the customer mm -hmm. peace of mind. Yeah. Uh, I know at the end of the month, I'm supposed to pay a certain amount to Isuzu, mm -hmm. and uh, they also maintain my vehicle. So I focus on my core business yeah. of uh, manufacturing, Absolutely. alcohol, or whatever I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But with the police, it, I must say that is one of a very well-organized uh, mm -hmm. uh, leasing product. Yeah. Uh, because the, the leasing, leasing association worked together with the, the police to create the framework yeah. for leasing to the police, you know, mm -hmm. looking at the opportunities, the risks and all that. Mm -hmm. And we started with phase one. As I indicated, we are already into phase seven. Wow. Uh, and we have seen mm -hmm. uh, other state departments mm -hmm. are also adopting the leasing model like Ministry of uh, Lands. We, yeah. we supplied quite a big fleet. Uh, county governments also are, are looking at uh, the leasing model. So it's benefited everybody. Yeah. We have benefited because we have been able to increase the touch points. Mm -hmm. One of the de deliverables of the, the leasing model, for instance, for the police, was that the police will require mm -hmm. service point within 50 kilometer radius from where they're doing their business. So from mm -hmm. a police post, 
they should not travel more than 50 kilometers before they can assess yeah. a service point. Mm -hmm. So that enabled us to really create yeah. and expand yeah. our service touch points, which has not only benefited the police, but also has benefited our other customers yeah. and also has benefited the youths. Mm -hmm. For instance, we have um, partnered yeah. with youths in, mm -hmm. in, in, in what we call machinani in the lo localities. Yeah. Uh, we have trained them, mm -hmm. we have uh, uh, leased mm -hmm. a container okay. uh, to them so they can be able to put in the parts mm -hmm. and can be able to service and some have grown to full-fledged service centers. Yeah. So the police also, security yeah. and safety for all of us as Kenyans, Absolutely. now they, they have vehicles, they feel proud that they can be able to be accessed much easier right. with products that don't break down because they're serviced by us. Wow, thank you so much for that. And, and I must celebrate you, you're one of the few ladies leading such large corporates in the mm -hmm. country, so I celebrate you for that. And I wanted to close by asking you, when you look five years from now, what's in your crystal ball? Uh, because this is a leadership conversation on your end as well. <laughs> we, we, we are growing and yeah. um, first from, from, from company point of view, yeah. we believe in our customers, mm. we believe in relationships yes. and we believe in excellence. Yeah. That is the value that we operate mm. a, as a company. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a wonderful workforce mm -hmm. that is very strong to be able to take our company to the next level. Absolutely. So when I talk about export expansion, mm -hmm. uh, we have already the bench strength mm. to take our business to the next level because okay. export is a, is a big opportunity. Yeah. As I indicated at the beginning, uh, with a uh, production capacity yeah. of 18,000 vehicles, yeah. we need to be able to get to the regional market. Absolutely. Uh, after sales support for our customers become key, mm -hmm. we are looking at providing more solutions mm -hmm. uh, with our customers, understanding the dynamics of their business, mm -hmm. what are the pain points, how can we solve their problems, mm -hmm. really integrating ourselves into their business yeah. to be able to really uh, understand them yeah. through digitization and leveraging technology and then be able to really deepen yeah. our support for them. So mm -hmm. that's from a company point of view. Yeah. But from an industry point of view, as I, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. Kenya is already yeah. a very important strategic mm -hmm. hub mm -hmm. for the automotive industry. Absolutely. With the automotive policy mm -hmm. and creating the Kenya Automotive Council, yeah. I am looking at how we can be able to leverage those two opportunities yeah. to be able to strengthen mm -hmm. first our local supply base. Yeah. Our local supply base has to be strong enough for us to be able to say that Kenya is ready to play mm -hmm. and compete yeah. and be competitive mm -hmm. in a regional setup. Yeah. So local supply base, mm -hmm. very, very critical yeah. uh, for, for, for our growth. Mm -hmm. uh, and then taking mm -hmm. the opportunity around Africa free trade area yeah. Yeah. to then be able to expand mm -hmm. uh, into our regional markets, wow. partnering with all these financial institutions that are already creating their footprint mm -hmm. regionally mm -hmm. uh, to really now go and design mm -hmm. products in those regions to be able then to support our regional customers. Wow. Thank you so much for your time, Rita. Thank you very much. Excellent. I know. Thank you so much, Rita, for the tour. And of course, we end the show right here at the showstopper, the Elliot Kipchoge. Just a few units left, so you better grab yours. Uh, that's it right here on the Trading Bell Show. You know, get an Isuzu. See you later. Up next is the market.